very long day for you. So oh, thank I love you. it. I love it. I could talk about this stuff forever. So th thanks so much for um, bringing me in and getting to talk to you guys again. Yeah, super, super fun. Um, we got such a great response from your free workshop. Like it's so much fun and I love how you present the information. And even when, you know, like I've been to art school, you know, we've got people who are just starting out. We've got people who have, um, you know, BFAs, MFAs, all that stuff, but like hearing it in a different format is always super helpful. And I've had so many people say like, wow, I didn't really understand it. Or um, it just was presented in a way that made, uh, you know, when you hear it just slightly different, it just totally. something else clicks and you're suddenly just like, oh, wow. Okay. Now I want to go play. So it's been so much fun. <laughs> yeah. That's the whole, that's the whole idea is like, and it was quite a, for me, it was, it was a surprise. You know, this is, this is just how I kind of organize. Like I wasn't teaching before. I was just trying to figure it out myself and I would write, this is how I wrote things down. And then I, <clears throat> I taught a workshop. I just did one just because I was so tired of being by myself in the studio. And then I saw all these non-artists, people who, who were just mildly interested and they did such, it was like their progress was incredible in seven days. Things that I was, you know, I've been going, I went to art school and I had all these, all this training and I saw what people did in just a few days because they could understand this information. And I was like, oh my God, at the end of this week, I was like, this is, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm an artist, but I got to share this and I, I want to do this more. It was so fun to see the progress of all these people. So yeah, it was, it was, it was shocking to me. <laughs> yeah. It's all, yeah, it's, it's, well, you know, I think it's that, um, like, you don't know, like, you know what you know, but um, you don't, because we accumulate it over so much time, we don't realize sometimes I think how much we know. I think a lot of artists um, come to that conclusion where they they internalize some some things and it just feels so intuitive. And then when they try to explain it to somebody, yeah. um, you realize like how, what that like how much background you actually do have. Yeah, and I, I feel like really what we're doing, uh, we're we're almost like reminding people of what they already know, you know. But when mm -hmm. they get it all aligned, you know, it's like keeping red, bringing certain things to the surface. They, everyone has this ability within them. And, and that's what makes the difference. It's not like these are, it's like a foreign language or something. It's like, it makes sense. Yeah. It's a felt sense in a way, you know, we can feel when something's right. And that's what I love about art. You know, you don't need to even understand, people don't even need to understand what a painting, what's going on with color, to just know they love it or for someone to connect with it. I mean, we talk about it, you talk about it all the time, everything that goes into this work, all these principles and ideas, and then you put it out in the world and someone comes along who has no idea about art and they're just like, I want that. I don't know what, I just want that, <laughs> you know? Yeah. They can feel it. And that's what's so cool about this. Yeah, yeah. Preaching to the choir, I am sure. Um, but, um, we got, we, you know, like I emailed, um, a lot of the savvy painter listeners and I said, Hey, you guys, Nicholas is willing to come back and, um, we're going to talk again and we're going to do some critiques of the work that people did while, um, participating in the free art to life oh, workshop. Wow. I didn't know they did. So this is some things they were involved in during the workshop. That's so cool. So, yeah, yeah. Some of it, some of it is, and some of it, some of it, it looks like is, um, is just, is work that they, that they would like to have critique, but either way, like we said, fair game, just send us what you have. Like yeah, we love totally. to see the stuff that, that um, you guys have. So um we, we, I mean, the emails that we got to, I got to say, like some of them are just so um, powerful and so beautiful. Um, so we were going to pick out of that, you know, kind of pick five people out of the hat for you to critique their work. And if we have time, I'd love to do more. If you're game for it, um, we'll sure, see. I love through. doing this. I love doing this. Yeah. Um, so we have loaded up, just so um, all of you know, we have loaded up these images into a folder. Before we get started though, just from those of you who are here, if you can just put in the chat, um, 
I would love to know like where you guys are and also, you know, if you were able to submit work or not, it's also, that's also kind of fun to know, like if the person is here, cause maybe we can pull you on too. Yeah. Right? And, and don't forget you guys, if some of you were able to attend the workshop this week, you know, if you have some underlying questions um, about it or uh, anything about um, the creative visionary program or whatever you want, um, this is a great place to do it. Um, so and I'm, I'm totally into that because I will, I will sort of be adjusting these images, but I'm also going to be kind of demonstrating what we talked about this week in the free workshop, you know, through the lens of design, value, and color. So I guess a lot of you guys saw that we're in the free workshop. Um, I presume so. So yeah. Um, let's oh, great. See. So Nancy's here and Sean. Cool. Yeah. We're in. Oh, in Santa Barbara, I love, I went to school in Santa Barbara, I love it there. I didn't know that. Yeah, you see Santa Barbara. Awesome, awesome. Um, well, the first person, I'm not sure if she's here or not, but the first person that I pulled out of the hat is um, Lauren, Lauren, I think, Ronnie. Um, and she wrote this beautiful email. Um, just saying um, that uh, both both of you have been an important support for me during these COVID times um, and that the benefit for her has been finding her way back to her studio because uh, both her and her husband have been um, pretty severely isolated because of COVID. So um, she is very grateful to uh, Nicholas and Savvy Painter for helping her get back into paintings. And um, she's been making some breakthroughs. So I thought like that oh, would be, right. um, I just wanted to share that with you because um, I just think like some of these people that you, that write in that have been so isolated that really are struggling now, um, art really is, um, you know, for me, it's like, it's like my sanctuary. It's my, it's my yeah. happy place. It's a thing that's always there, no matter what. It's, it's really up for people. And, uh, you know, and I was talking about this earlier today, you know, you, we have had to let go of a bunch of things uh, this past year, you know, a lot of distractions, a lot of really great things we don't get to do. And then there's just a lot of other things that have dropped away. Um, and it makes what remains kind of more important. And, and I think what remains yeah. for a lot of people is like, what about their art and what, what do I want to make and what do I want to contribute? And, you know, that call I think is coming up for people right now. So I'm, you know, I'm glad I'm, I'm touched, you know, and I think, you know, I think it's really cool when you can help people find their way back to a, a you know, sort of a better, better situation for themselves. Art's so good at that. So that's, yeah. that's, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like what we, we talked about um, last time is that um, it is it really is like the oxygen, I think, for ourselves. So when you, you know, especially now we all like, we all need to have like the deep breath and to get like more of it because, yeah, I mean, come on, <laughs> you can all use that. Um, but yeah, let's look at, uh, okay, Laurie, I hope I'm saying your name right. She is here. That's fantastic. Um, very, very cool. Do you have that the um, her work there for Nick? Oh, let me let me look. So, oh, so this is some of the submitted work. Yeah. Let's see here. Um, let's um, see. Uh, let me let me go. Yeah. I'm, I'm, okay. All right. Hold on a second. One second. Okay. It was uh, Lorene Ronnie's, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So let's see here. Um, let me just look at, cause I see there's three or four. Um, cool. Uh, so okay. Nick is going to actually download these and get them into Photoshop and then share his yeah, screen. I mean, I'll just choose one of them. Yeah. Um, hold on one second. Uh, um, so while he's doing that, while he's loading up and getting ready, I just want to say hello to some people because uh, Mary Roche is here. She says, so thankful for this workshop. Thanks, Nick and Entries, for introducing him to us through your amazing podcast. Happy yeah, to do that, Mary. So um, oh, and Mary from St. Pete. Okay. Um, and Kitty is here. Kitty Schroeder. I know Kitty. Um, and she has a question. So I am going to pull that question so we can talk about that later. All right. Well, I'm, 
I am ready to go. One thing I'd love to do maybe in the chat is uh, it's, it's Lorianne, right? Lorianne, am I saying the name Lorianne? right? Yeah, let's. Lorianne. Um, Lorianne, what, um, and I can share my screen in a second, but well, maybe I'll just share my screen uh, now. Can I do that? Yeah, you can do that. And actually, you know what I could do if you want, let's just make it really fun. If uh, Tell me what you think. You can talk about this. And then um, if Lorianne, let me know in the chat, Lorianne, if first of all, are we saying your name right? And second of all, um, are you, <laughs> are we butchering your name? Yeah. Um, and the other thing um, is, uh, oh, are you in a place like- Lorianne, okay. Lorianne, okay. Um, do you have a microphone like we can bring you on so you can talk to Nick directly? Yeah, I mean, what, here's the question I want to ask you. And what's so great, and thanks for, for being so, you know, putting your work out there. You know, what's the one thing, you know, what, what are you struggling with in your work when you, when you look at it, you know? And because, again, this is like getting it more like you all the time. So what, what is the thing that you're feeling or needing or wanting? Do, can you... You know, if there was one big thing. What would that be? And um, and that's a good way to kind of start. And then I can address that because I don't want to go off on something if it's, you know, I want to be, I want it to be helpful. If you have a direction uh, or uh, an idea of what you what you're curious about. Um, let me. I can. I can get her to. Let me give. Um, it says here allowed to talk. Let me get her. There we go. Hi, Lorian. Hi. Hi. Can you see me, or you can you just hear me? We, we can, can just hear, you. hear you. Okay. Um, thank you for being there and for picking my paintings because <laughs> yeah. I really could use some help. I've been really excited about what I've been making and I'm finally working in series. I'm usually all over the place, like doing lots of different things at one time, but they don't relate to each other, even in style. So this was a big breakthrough for me, but I feel like a I've got the tail of something, but I can't see the head. And oh. I, I uh, really want to clarify a little bit because there's something I've been exploring the idea of text as texture, as how we communicate, how art, mark making, all of these things, how they relate to each other. And um, I really, I've been feeling really strong about that and reading a lot about it. And I feel like it's coming through in the paintings, but they're just so busy. I don't, Yeah, I'm having trouble balancing them. But. So so your challenge or something that you're feeling is, is that everything's kind of going off at the same amount and and you wanna have maybe a little bit more, um, you know, how to, how, to, how to get that kind of noise reduced uh, some. Exactly. Okay. Okay, great. Um, now, did you watch the workshop this week? You were there, right? Yeah, yeah, I was there. And I just okay, cool. Oh, oh, really? Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. <laughs> oh, good. Okay, well, we're gonna be together for a long time. But so this is a, <laughs> this is great. This is my first Bonus. look at your work. And I'm <laughs> honored to look at it. I'm so excited for you. Thank you. Okay, so let me, uh, let me share my screen if I may. And I have this here. I just grabbed this one. Um, okay, so how was how big is this? I'm just curious. Uh, these are uh, 42 by 37. Wow. Well, here's what I like. I like and they're how on you're, paper. Okay. Yeah, I like how you're you're you know you're using all the paper. You're you're not. I mean, I don't. You're not afraid here. I can feel that. You know, timidity <laughs> is not your problem at all. And I love <laughs> all the different kinds of marks you're making, my eyes moving around. I talked about that this week, you know, how value contrast moves my eye around and you're doing such a great job of that. So let me just show you. So like, you know, we go here, we go here, we go here, we go here. We're, we're definitely moving around and looking at a lot of things and it's it, cool, but I get what you're saying about like, there's just a lot, like if this, this is like a really boisterous party with a lot of different people. And again, it has to do with value. So the reason we can, I think I can help you get this more clear by making things more quiet. And remember I talked about uh, the, the loud conversation 
is the part of the painting that we can see really clearly because it's got the most value contrast. And then there's the quiet part of the painting that we can make subtle. And, and those need to be far apart. Like they gotta be really different from another for it to work. If they're kind of close, like if people are being really loud in the room and people are kind of being not too quiet, being a little, it doesn't work, it's still noisy. So let me just show you um, on your picture. So see these grays in here, um, these, these, uh, these grays, um, those are fairly dark. I'm gonna just select all of them right now. Okay, so there they all are. I think I've kind of got most of them. And now this is not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna, I think it's gonna show you. Now, watch what happens as this gray. So those grays, they are lighter. And I love that there's like, they're kind of in the background, there's all, but they're, they need to be more quiet, more subtle. And when they get more subtle, then we're gonna see that writing thing even more. So check it out, watch what happens as those values get lighter, this painting is gonna get more and more refined. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, this, all it is, is it's the different, it's the, it's the distance between, so check it out, here's where you were mm -hmm. and here's where you are. Ah, that does and make what, a big difference. Yeah, look at this, you are so close. Now, you know, when we do this, okay, so now you're here, now the loud conversation is all you we know what the loud conversation is it's so clear right but mm -hmm. i think even so i think we could take some of the loud conversation see how dense it is in here again we yeah. want to move around the picture so if i come in just i'm just going to arbitrarily cho choose it um i'm going to take a couple of these darks away hold on one second here um but this is, I mean, you, this is all it is, is a value thing. So let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just take this. They're all kind of connected here. Um, let's see, uh, I'll take a few of these away. Um, how can I do this? Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna take that one, I'm gonna take that. I am selecting a few of the darks. Um, because there's a lot, you know, like you have a lot here and maybe this one here, maybe this, this one. Okay, it's a little tricky to separate it, but I can do it, okay. All right, so now watch as a few of these darks go away. We're still gonna have a lot, but check it out. Watch as those darks go away. And I'm gonna make them, I'm not gonna leave it here. Do you see how that would be kind of like, that's not it. They've got to right. go quiet. Look at how beautiful that background is now. Oh, that wow. quiet conversation, it's gorgeous. And that's what's so cool is you can be really busy. Now we need a dark over here, you know, like, uh -huh. you know, you gotta like play around with this and like watch what, oops, watch when we bring a dark back, that loud conversation that, view from across the room has to be interesting to look at. So let me just put a dark mm -hmm. here for a second. Watch what this does. Let's bring our eye back here. See it? Yeah. Right. And you know, you would choose a better thing. Your sense of design's killer. Um, but oh, you know, the eye loves this subtlety. Look at the control you have taken us through here. Boom, we see something. Subtle, subtle, boom, subtle, subtle, boom. That's differences. And the same thing goes to color, right? Like we can have, we can have the color, um, like maybe this green right here, maybe that gets um, a little, uh, maybe that gets really subtle too. Like a little, you know, it's a little different of a color, not, it's all not dark color, equally saturated. So this is a color that's lighter and it's not as saturated. See how rich that looks next to the blue? Mm -hmm. piling up the differences is what it's all about. So, wow, I love it though. You know, check it out. Look, let's go back to where you were. Yeah, you are yeah like, it's a big difference. <laughs> yeah, this is huge. This is huge yeah. for you. I'm so glad that, you know, you submitted your work because what's what I love is what you're doing is hard to get people to do. You're really free. You're making marks that are personal. 
And, and there's tons to work with here. It's just about increasing your discernment. That's it. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, really beautiful work. I'm excited for you. Thank wow. you. Thank you. Yeah, I've been excited about this breakthrough. I feel like uh, all of the paintings I've been doing lately are related. There's something happening there. I haven't quite pinpointed. Well, it's it's because you're connecting. Underlying element is, but. Well, yeah, you're, you, yeah, no, you're connecting to yourself a little bit. And if it feels mm -hmm. free and easy, that's why. And so you're, you're you know, and. And it, it makes sense to me. I, I, can, I can feel the ease when I look at this. Like this is mm -hmm. just, I would love to see you do just drawings too, like with no paint. You know, this, mm -hmm. this kind of mark making applies to all kinds of things. But um, yeah, it's cool. Very cool. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you so much for submitting. And, and it's Lorian, yes? Lorian, yeah. Got it. Okay, Lorian. Thank you so much for submitting. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Thank you, Antrice. Thank you, Nicholas. Absolutely. See you soon. Yeah, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that was awesome. Um, why don't we take, uh, let's see. Very, very cool. Um, oh, Delonix is here from Mexico City. Oh, hey, Delonix. Thanks for, thanks for being in the workshop. That's so great. Uh, yeah, and it's great that you're feeling, you know, just even a little bit of like different awareness. That's a huge shift, you know. You don't yeah. have to like, you know, just start seeing things differently because it's a process where you, you know, you hear a little thing here, you see a little thing there, and you catch a bit there, and suddenly you're seeing your work in a different way, and you make a big jump in your progress. Mm. You know, one of the things that. Um, I saw a question that I saw come up a lot and it's already come up in the, in the chat room is um, um, within the workshop, when you talk about color, um, how would you explain the difference between um, saturation and um, chroma and saturation? Like, with, like, I think people are getting a little bit, um, I don't know, confused, but a little bit like tripped up by like chroma, hue, saturation, and all the terms that we use to describe color. Yeah, it it's a thing. And in the Creative Visionary Program, um, I've made videos about this um, because saturation, it is one of the big question marks people have. They get kind of stuck on it. So here's how I like to describe it. And, you know, visually I can stand up there and paint and show it more, but um, saturation is just the intensity of the color, you know, and know that when you buy that cadmium yellow dark, when you buy it from the store, they just sell paint and it's fully concentrated. Like they don't, you're not buying anything else but the cadmium yellow dark, that they don't put anything else in there. You know, some cheaper paint, they actually put stuff in there to like make it look like there's more, but you don't, that's as concentrated as it can. I mean, think of a can of frozen orange juice that's fully saturated right and then you mix up a glass of orange juice you pour all this water in it and actually people add stuff to the smoothie and it becomes less orange juice like it's less saturated so anything you add to a color um, even if it's another highly saturated color it takes it away a little bit from being that cadmium yellow dark it's less saturated it's less like cadmium yellow dark the most saturated state it can be in. If mm. you add white to it, it takes the color away. If you add black to it, you add other colors, you add mud to it. Um, even if you use that pure pigment with a lot of water, you can see through to other colors coming through and that dilutes the color, right? So that's all saturation is. Now, chroma is kind of the name of color really. And I don't know, maybe chroma means saturation, but I've never heard of it. Chroma is just the name of the color. So is hue. Hue is just, it's a blue, it's a yellow, it's a red, you know? And chroma is mm -hmm. used like chroma, it's sort of collectively color. But yeah. that's how you want to think of saturation. It's the intensity of the color. And it's a difference, right? We talked about that this week. It's, they, and we, we were just showing on Lorraine's uh, painting, uh, Lorraine's painting that, you know, I took that color because all her colors were, kind of equally saturated. And so I said, you can also change up these colors. And I took that one dark kind of rich green color and I made it more washed out because mm. we love to see colors that are different from one another. Some are less saturated, some are more saturated. Some are darker, some are lighter. 
These are some of the big movers and shakers of working with color. There are the, some of the differences that we like to experience as, as humans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think too, like one thing um, that, that I've seen people get a little bit confused about when it comes to saturation um, is that it's always related to what's on the canvas. It's always related to what's next to it. So you could have, like, if you look at that painting, you know, behind Nick and you see that little patch of, of green in the corner by his shoulder, like next to his shirt, that's extremely desaturated. <laughs> right. But if you look at it next to, you know, like even um, even like if you just compare it to the white, then it's 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 super saturated. Or if you compare it to the gray, if you put it next to the gray, the gray that's next to it, then you would describe that green as saturated is much more saturated than the gray, gray yeah. in relation to what's next to it. Yeah. Like this is a pretty saturated yellow in relationship to the yellow pad, you get it? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's all relative. If I had a, a pure, you know, paintbrush with cadmium yellow paint on it and I held it up next to this, this is not pure cadmium yellow. It's pretty yellow, but probably it's all relative. So again, it's what you put next to things. But, you know, think of it like, think of it like making a cake if you, if you, anything you add into that cake is gonna make it less sweet. You know, if you, if you pour in, you know, if you make a mistake and add two times as much flour, it won't be a very sweet um, cake, right? You know, but if you double up the sugar, it'll be really sweet. So that's a saturation. That's, that's the intensity of that taste. And sugar is this, is this sort of, is my metaphor for the color. But anything, I mean, we can take color and we can add, you can add dirt to it. And that's gonna, anything will reduce the saturation of it. Even if you're mixing dirty water, you know, you haven't changed your water bowl, that's gonna desaturate it, you know? Um, you might take a picture with the, of your really highly saturated painting with your, with your phone and your phone's dirty, the lens, and you post it on Instagram and it won't be as saturated because it's going, those colors are going through. It's almost like a glaze. Cause that's happened to me a lot. That phone gets so dirty, you know? And I'm like, what's yeah. wrong with my painting? You know, I just need to clean my phone. <laughs> um, let's see. Do you want to do another, um, sure, sure. another critique? Yeah. So let's see who I, I I'm going to give preference to people who are here. Yeah. Um, great. Uh, Paul Hunter is here. I see Paul. So let's take a look at Paul's work. Okay, great. Um, and while you're getting it. that together, okay. um, we have this shared folder. So it takes, takes Nick just a few seconds to Yeah, I'm, I'm looking Paul, blah, 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 blah. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, and so well, Paul, while, while we're doing this, be thinking what it is you know, uh, you know, what's, what's your challenge uh, that you have with it? Um, Cause that just makes it so we can speak to that, you know? Um, Cause I'm pulling it up in Photoshop right now. I've never seen your work before. Wow, cool. It's really great. Um, so um, do we want to see if Paul wants to get on or does he want to talk in the chat or? Yeah, let me, um, let me give Paul, I'm going to enable your mic right now. There we go. So now, Paul, you'll have to unmute yourself. That works for you. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Hey, Paul. Okay. Yes, all right. Cool. Let me share okay. my screen. Uh, yeah. The um, the artwork I sent you was a bit. Um, uh, it's quite realistic. <laughs> yeah, I love so, it. it. I haven't done any painting since I joined your um, uh, workshop. So I ha I have seen your workshop. Um, but I haven't done anything since I, I've kind of been watching it late at night, um, yeah. but I, I haven't had any time to pick up a brush or that's um, okay. Kind of, yeah. like, it's just, kind of know, just getting it. the information. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, I, my, my style's kind of changing slightly, but it, it's, I, I, I'm trying to get more, um, uh, freer with my brush work. Um, uh -huh. uh, and I like to play with a paint and push it around. This, this um, is probably a bit more of the realistic side than I normally do. But um, um, so I, I always get a challenge of trying to be a bit more freer with what I'm trying to do. 
a bit, um, and yeah, so it, I guess here it, it felt like I wasn't getting a clarity on, on um, what I was trying to focus on. I, um, I think there was too many darks coming out um, and the water wasn't, uh, wasn't working as I wanted it to be. What, um, um, just let me ask a clarifying question. Was, so is this, uh, are you painting this, uh, are you making this up? Are you painting this from a scene? Uh, it looks pretty like a real place to me. Is this? It is a real place, yeah. Okay. It's, sorry. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, I, I paint from, uh, uh, from real life. I go to a location, then I, I take photos. And this one I painted um, in a studio. Okay. Um, yeah. So what yeah. what part of this painting do you like and what part don't you do you have a sense of that? Like where it's kind of working for you? I mean, I know the parts that I like, but I mean where what do you think is what are you struggling with when you see this picture? Um so my my I, I like going to the sort of right hand side with the light coming down and um and then kind of everything bringing me over that, that side. Um, and then the, the kind of a upside down flower was the interesting bit that I, I was kind of focusing on as well. Um, yeah. uh, so that was kind of, those were two focal points for me. And then everything else was trying to bring them in there. Um, and I was just trying to, I, I, I love the feeling. So the other thing was a feeling because it was at the time of day and the, the colors and the, the light. Yeah. So I was, I was trying to, and then the clouds, the clouds are kind of made up. I, that wasn't, I, I, I just adjusted the clouds just to, uh, it felt like to kind of support it. But, yeah. Uh, well, what I love about this, man, your colors are so beautiful. You know, like what you're doing. And that's my favorite part too. I think we're talking about the same areas. This is the area, right? That we're, we're kind of looking at. Yeah. Yeah. It's just really beautiful. It's really beautiful. Um, so that's important, right? Like, so let's talk about this area. What's happening is that we have in this area, we have it's where differences are piling up. And this so relates to what we've been talking about all week. You know, you have this, um, these, this sort of this contrast of, of shape and this subtlety and this beautiful sort of like sky color and this value contrast and small shapes and this little peck of sky of that sun there and this small shape like this is just going off and all this muted subtle stuff is here now however so that's all going good and i agree this is this is really good as well but remember what we were saying um you know you want to be giving the uh, there's a journey on this picture so where our eye goes is important and where our eye goes is where there's contrast. So there is some contrast here. So we look here, this is cool. Like we are definitely looking here and we're kind of looking here. We're in, you know, this area is going really well here, but it, over here, when we come down here, we're not, nothing's really like dragging our eyes over here a little bit. And there's, a, there's some kind of bigger contrast up here but let me just show you something. I'm gonna take this and uh, I'm gonna make this whole picture because you're showing us the whole picture. I'm gonna just take all the, the, um, the, the color out of this thing now. Um, and I'm gonna show you the loud conversation. I'm squinting my eyes and I wanna show you what the whole thing looks like, what, what's going on here. So we, I clearly identify So this is kind of the loud conversation. Now it's tricky because it's a little hard to show um, because there's, you know, I'm pushing the values darker and lighter, but this is where we're looking. Do you get it? We're going, this is where we look in the picture. We're staying right here. We're just staying right here. And do you see how this really cool thing you've made here? It's like kind of the same as the, like these two sides are kind of the same, just graphically. I know it's a building and everything, but in terms of what we're experiencing here, these sizes of things, and maybe it was like that, but we want to create some variety here a little bit more. We're staying up here. 
And this lower part of the picture, we're not really going to um, so much. We're, we're looking up here a little, but we're definitely staying, and we're, this line of contrast is keeping us in the middle of the picture. So this is a design thing. This is a design value thing. I just realized my, uh, let me get my, uh, hold on a second. I don't want my battery to run out. Phew. Okay. <laughs> um, there we go. Um, so if we look at this smaller, check this out. Um, I'm gonna go smaller with this. This is the loud conversation. I don't know if you can even see that. This has got to be really interesting um, for us to look at from a distance. And right now it's like half the painting's dark and half the painting's light. And we're kind of divided in the middle and we're staying in the middle. We're kind of staying down here. And so we got to make this little thing really exciting to look at. So in a way, let me just show you something. Let me just, let's just make an exciting looking rectangle. I'm gonna crop this um, and get this thing. So it's, I'm cropping this. I mean, look how small I'm working, but this, I just want us to just like gas on what you're seeing. I wanna make these things more exciting to, to look at. I mean, I'm working like super small here. Do you see like from a distance, let me get a little bigger. I don't know what I've done, but my, my picture is a little more exciting. Let's look at this. Do you get it? Like now, and now we can even take, we can have some light, something, and this could be, you know, it's there in the picture. Sometimes we have to add it in a, in a way, like we need some little, some little light, something down here that has some light. You've got it a little bit there. You know, maybe this gets a little wider over here. Maybe, and up in the sky, get this sky going over here a little bit. Like this can pick up a little bit of value contrast. So there's a little bit more contrast up there. Check this out. So um, I'm gonna bring in a little bit more value contrast up there. This is the part of the picture that you love. Do you get it? Do you see how that is kind of, um, graphically, the design and values starting to happen a little bit more, it's a little bit more bolder. And it's interesting abstractly now, um, not just, um, it's not just a picture that happened to be like this. You've got to go into that landscape and kind of change it, work it out. Let me open up the other, um, where we started here. Let's see. Oops. Okay, hold on one second. So let's look at this picture again where we started. Oh, it might be doing that because you already have it open, but I wonder if you click on history, like the the little I, I'm pointing at it with my finger, but if you move your mouse down. Oh yeah, bit. yeah. Let me just um, hold on. I'll just uh, save it as. Uh, save there you go. That works too. Uh, save. Okay. Now I'm gonna, uh, open, I'm gonna open up that picture so we can talk about where we were before. So it's all about, right? Like this has got to get us really excited. There can't be areas of the picture where we're not being invited and it's not dynamic. We got to get it going off. So when we see it, like if this picture gets small, it's got to be interesting from that distance, you know. It's got to get us moving, and it's value contrast that does it. And you know, I'm sort of double downing on the parts you love, you know. And and you know, this is very crude, but you know, this doesn't have to be as dark here. You can have it be a bit, a bit more subtle, you know. Get it so it's like it it is in in nature, you know. But this is, this is sort of how you can start, you know, be brutal with setting up that picture into an abstraction, first abstracting so it's exciting to look at. And then it's also this amazing scene. Um, that, that's what, how I would, I would focus on it, to get us so we're moving around the picture and experiencing the parts and focusing on the parts that you're excited about sharing with us. I mean, look at, this is so cool. This, this is so beautiful. Like, you know, that, that's really gorgeous what you have going there. So 
I hope, I don't know, does that resonate for you? Is that helpful? It does, yeah. Um, um, I realize that the, some of the, the lines on, along the skyline was kind of pretty flat. There, were, there wasn't much variation. So right, it, right, it, did, right. It, did, it did occur to me that there was, there was prob problems. I, I do see yeah. what you're doing. So um, yeah, I, I guess I just need to like the design be more abstract and, and well it's not that you need to abstract it it can be totally realistic you know it can be totally realistic like let's let's you know like this is real it's not making it abstract but like let's say we want to make this picture let's just focus in on this right like this big sky and like this is your totally your painting and we have you know you've got this dark here you know, like this is starting to really work just like this, you know, like got this dark here. We're going to come up here a little bit. Let me get this a little bit. Um, you know, having a little darker up there, perhaps. So our eye goes up there. There's a little bit of contrast. Like this thing's working, you know, and let's get your eye to go down here. Um, hold on one second here. Um, let's, I need you to, once we're moving around the picture, it starts to work. We're starting to experience this, right? And even in here, we can get this a little lighter, the variation of, of contrast, like bringing up the light a little bit more. You see how this like, is like, was that? You know, what, you know what I think is really interesting about this is just this idea of bringing, um, when we talk about bringing abstraction into, representational art. Um, I think sometimes there's an assumption that that means like, let's make it unrecognizable. Um, but it's it's more than that. It's it's about, you know, really allowing your, your vision of um, how you experience. So in this, in this place, Paul, is this in Singapore? I know Paul, Paul is in Singapore, right? Oh, yes, yes. This is Singapore. So like yeah. your experience of what it's like to be in this location and be like, you know, like the thing that I'm really loving about um, when I look at, even if you're looking at an entire Vista, like your original painting, there's always something that kind of grabbed your attention first and, and allowing yourself to, um, for lack of a better term, be a poet as opposed to a journalist and really accentuate the things that you you see because what we what we as the viewer want to see is you Paul we want to know like you know because we could we could everybody anybody could take a photograph of this place but you're the one who's kind of giving us this tour of this place and presenting an experience to us and so it's almost like you know when when um, it's human nature I think when we see something amazing we want to share it like our immediate response is to be like, you know, tap somebody like, oh my God, did you see that? Look at that, it's incredible. And so you can do that in your painting by what Nick is saying, by accentuating different areas um, and allowing yourself the freedom to, to really shine the light on, on different places. And, yeah, you know, so, so like in this picture, like, I'm not sure what you love. I had to ask you, you know, so you, it's like an editing thing. And, you know, so you could have all this stuff, but there's once the one thing, you know, when I asked you, it's like, this is kind of what you, you know, the feeling, the color shift, you know, so you can include um, all of this, but you got to quiet some of it down, like get it so it's more subdued because right now I would say, you love this tall thing here. You like this the same amount. You like this busy cafe scene and this funny building here. And then you like this too. And then, you know, it's there's when you showing a whole bunch of things, it feels like you're not sure. And this is the part when you're painting from life, it's so seductive. There's so much, there's a, like a bounty of things to look at. Be discerning, use the principles to highlight what it is you wanna show us quiet the other things down. I mean, it's no different than what we were doing on that other caller on the last, on uh, Lorraine's painting, uh, Lorraine's painting, where I quieted some parts down. 
The same principle applies here. They're just realistic. We're quieting some of it down so we can feel more what you love, you know? And I mean, I crop this and I, you know, and, and then I darken things so we look in places and our eyes moving around. But for you, maybe it's more about the water. Maybe it's a certain building, you know? And maybe that all, all the other buildings are all close in value and that one has more contrast so we look there. So that's, you know, you're, you're saying it absolutely right. There's an abstraction going on here, but it's, it's, it stays realistic if that's what you're into. Um, you just have to prioritize what you want us to see. You're definitely, it's like a poet for sure. That's a great way to describe it. Mm. Um, Thank you. Does, was that helpful, Paul? It, it, yes, it is. Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd love to see you, you know, post, share, you know, send me it. I want to see how you reinterpret this with, with this in mind. And isn't it cool? Like as you get more clear, Paul, about what it is, it's easier to talk about it. And then once we'll be able to see it. When you look at a powerful painting, there is no doubt. When you look at it, you are just, it grabs you by the collar and you, you know, because the guy is the, the woman or the man, whoever made it has, has, has delivered it in a way that's powerful. Power is just you deciding what it is you want to say and then using the principles to say it. So it gets really clear and more powerful. And that moves people. 100%. Yeah. Um, let's see. Okay. I had, um, let's see, who can we, who can we pick next? I had, um, let's see, Bitsy Broughton. I don't see her here unless she's on, on Facebook. Um, I'm going to do this because I picked some number. I picked, I picked some like kind of random numbers, but I kind of love the fact that, you know, like the people who are, are here. Yeah, so, yeah that's great. Um, so let me do this because I have a list here that Nick can't see. So Nick, can you just pick a number between, uh, let's say one and one and 18. Okay. Um, 12. Kathleen Leroy. Okay. Okay. And we don't know if Kathleen's here. Nope. Raise your hand if you're here. So then we'll see you, Kathleen. And you know, I do not see Kathleen. Okay, I would but choose I do see Susan. Okay, let's do Susan. Awesome. Okay. Okay, what's Susan's last name? Owens. Okay, let me hop over there and get that. Hold on one second. Susan. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Oh, cool. All right. Control. All right. So can Susan uh, hop on and, and we'll, uh, yeah. we can ask those important questions. And you know what's cool, you guys, like, think about this, like, it's what you are trying to do. This is nothing like I can't critique someone's work. I mean, it's your work, but I can help you. You got to like by your you're making it and what you want to do is 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 everything, you know. So yeah. um, that's why it's important to, to talk to you about it. Real quick, Hi, Bitsy is on Facebook. So we'll do Bitsy after we do Susan. So Bitsy, I know okay. you're listening. Uh, we will get to you. I'm here. Okay. All right. So everyone can see this, this is cool. Um, great. It's, it's so good. We got some real variety of, of work today. Um, so, so where, what are you, what are you challenged by? And I'll, there's lots of great things to say here, but what, what's, what are you struggling with? I think I've achieved movement around the painting. Um, I think it, the values are so all over the place that Maybe it's too much loud and it again, maybe loud and quiet working together. But at the same time, I still want to have that variety of shapes and a bit of realism to the apple blossoms themselves, because it would be darker towards the bottom and where the sun hits it should be brighter. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. And um, is, are you painting this just curious? Are, are you like, do you have a pot of a vase of flowers you're looking at and is no it's uh from one of my own photos okay okay um 
All right. So uh, yeah, really cool, really cool colors and, and everything. And I agree with you. What I love about it is that you're really, you have a value range here. And, and it's also not just like a, a vase of flowers. You're doing something. These are flowers, but you're also abstracting it, which is kind of interesting to me. You know, that's right. Yeah, you know, this is like a, like a, I mean, I would love to see this as a carpet, you know, it's just this wild pattern and that's also kind of flowers, you know, um, which is kind of neat. Now, um, you're, so, so tell me again, so you feel like, is this too busy or, you know, I'm like worried this? that it's getting a little too busy. Okay. Yeah. And what about the color? How do you feel about the color? Um, some of the, the darker blues are a little too intense for me. I think that the overall picture, I'm trying to have it more of a, like an aqua green. So mm -hmm. maybe the intense blues towards the bottom are a little too intense or saturated if you want to go that direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, what, what I'm on the lookout for is I'm just looking for, for differences how can we take what you've shown us here? What are the ways we can, we can heighten the differences that you're already doing? You have a great range of value contrast. So, you know, um, I'm looking at the shapes of things and we have a lot of the same kind of shapes here, um, but I get you're trying to show like, it's like diving into this bush, you know, of all these okay. things. So, so let's start kind of there with the design here a little bit and, and, and then, and value. Um, so starting with um, value, uh, if I squint my eyes and kind of look at this, so let me, let me just, uh, let me just duplicate this layer. Hold on one second. I'll, let's look at this in black and white because that's always kind of fun to do. Um, okay. <clears throat> let's take the color away for a second. Okay. So, um, if we have, you know, remember I talked about this in the free workshop, you know, we have like, let me ask you this question. See these, this value here, is this a light or a dark, this value right here? I would say dark. Okay. Is this a light or dark here? Dark. Uh-huh. And is, what about, is, is this a light or dark? Yeah, I, I'd say lighter. Yeah. So here's, the, okay, and then like over here, what about this? Is this a light or dark? It's, when I squint, it's more dark. Yeah. So let's just turn this off for a second. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make some arbitrary decisions. I'm going to push things a little lighter and a little darker. So what's dark is a little bit more clear and what's light is a little bit more clear. Mainly it has to do with these values. So I'm gonna take like um, some of these lights. Uh, let's see here. Um, let's select these lights here. Uh, okay. All right. And I'm gonna, I'm de I'm gonna definitely um, make these go a little lighter. Let's just see what happens here. Okay, so I'm gonna select a few more here. These are dark, I'm choosing, here, let me just get this here, hold on a second. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take some of these lights. What I wanna have is some more subtlety in this picture, a little bit more close, some close value, closer value relationships. Now, what's interesting is when we get, you see how the, like, there's, there's, there's more subtlety now with, with, these, with these leaves. Like you've got this, this leaf in particular, it's this beautiful variation. It's super, super subtle. Um, and I'm gonna select some of these, um, let's see here. Okay. Um, what's dark and what's light i'm gonna like this is kind of dark this is dark here um 
this is a dark, this is a dark in here, this is dark, dark in here, dark back here. I'm gonna just push things a around a little bit to get it a little darker. I can't just do all of them, but I'm just gonna, do you see what that does? So like, check this out. Like it's just getting clearer. Now you have this beautiful, rich, dark down here. And I wanna come up here and I'm gonna get that, push that. So it's even darker up there, kind of like at the bottom because I want our eyes to go up there and it's gonna have contrast now as this gets richer and darker. You see what happens is it takes our eye up there. Yep. So we're looking in all these places now. I wanna have us look down here just a little bit. I'm gonna just take a little bit of this picture just, just as an idea, um, just throw this over here. I'm gonna just activate it down here just a little bit, right? Because what, we, what you presented us with is just this, we want our eyes to move around. I know we wanna stay in the flower thicket, but we also wanna move and go to some other places. So just a little bit down there, we still got that thicket feeling. Uh, which is nice. Now, we have this green, see this green leaf here? Mm -hmm. It's quite dark and it's really, really different. And it's surrounded by all these leaves and everything. And we're kind of staying there. We're staring there. We're staying in the middle. It's right in the middle. The value contrast holds us there. The color is completely unique. It's surrounded by all these other colors. So I'm going to make it so we don't get stuck there. I'm going to take this color, I'm gonna change the value, mostly it's value. And then, um, cause I want our eyes to move through your picture a little bit better. And um, so I'm gonna just take some of that intensity out. I'm gonna take some of that saturation green out and I'm gonna lighten that value a little bit. So our eye can move around this picture. Do you see how we can move around a little bit better? Let's look at this here. You see that? See, we can start yes. to move around. Yes. Yeah, it's subtle, right? Because this thing's working pretty well. Also, this leaf um, is, it's so beautiful, you know, and it's a little bigger than other things, but I'm gonna, I wanna make this just a little bigger, a little bigger, just to push that difference a little bit more. We're not, we don't wanna lose the feeling of the work, but we wanna have a break from everything being the same size. So that one at the bottom has been, it's nice to have this little, tiny piece down there. And also we have everything. What's cool is like we can take something and we can have something in front of something else a little bit, like having that a little bit more. So we start getting depth going where we're moving through and in and around a little bit more. Here's this leaf issue over here a little bit more. I'm gonna, now I can darken this leaf or I can lighten it, but sort of it's right in the middle. Um, actually, I think I'm just gonna lighten this area here. Take this away here. Um, can I just quiet this down a little bit? See how we're starting to be able to move around the picture and we're staying again, where our eyes are going to this. See, once you start changing things, it starts to get a little, um, I'm gonna just take this and I'm gonna take some of this dark out of this. We've got tons of areas that are holding us, but this dark right in the middle, now we're starting to be free. Do you get it? Do you yes. see how we're getting to like cruise around? We're not getting stuck here, staring at this leaf, staring in here, our eyes moving around and we're experiencing different things in different places. Also by lightening stuff, we start to change the saturation. A lot of things are really equally saturated. Things were really like super blue all the time. You know, we can have like this right here. Um, we can take this and we can, we can have some areas that are not so saturated. Like that'll be so refreshing. So right here, I'm gonna take that really sweet blue, take some saturation away from it and bring it up in value and it makes the colors around it look so beautiful because there's like, there's, we, you know, not everything has to be this. You talked about it in the beginning. You're saying, I've got this really candy colored blue everywhere. And, you know, that's fine. But we, but, but, you know, if you want some areas 
to have that beautiful blue and change some and push them so there's some unsaturated. And this is, these are color differences I'm talking about now. Um, so I'm gonna take some of that saturation out down there just a little bit. Watch what it does to the colors around it. It starts getting really rich, you know? <clears throat> And even this orange, you know, like we've got bright blue, like this blue back here, um, this blue is really powerful blue. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take some of that saturation away. I'm just gonna like, I like how you're handling the background down here. You've got so many bright colors. So I'm gonna take some of that out and, and just have it be kind of this dark. It's still got lots of blue in it. Now this orange, which is really, uh, super saturated here um, and actually i have to say that's part of the um uh back the just the canvas itself because this is a work in progress oh, so yeah that orange will disappear it's, yeah it's it's there because i haven't finished well i kind of like it peeking through but and i think you can leave it but again if the blue you know is the thing that we're in love with you know that really cuz that you know a few you have these gorgeous blues in here that are really saturated watch what happens when i take away some of that orange color that's competing with it okay i'm going to and you know so i'm going to take some of this saturation away look at this it's so beautiful like look at what happens to the blue look at this blue now like, you know, it's just, it's not competing. Um, so these are minor refinements, but do you get it? Like, that's so cool. What's, what's going on, you know? I still Great. feel like this, we can, you know, we can take some of this dark, this, this bullseye right here. Um, and, and, you know, it, have the dark, have it a little less dark in the middle where, so our eyes can move around and we're more lost in this world, you know? So I hope, I, does that resonate for you? Do you sort of see? Oh, absolutely, that? absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you are so close and you know, this is really good. Like this is super strong what you're doing. It's mm -hmm. these minor things, taking it to like, you know, this next level, you know? Um, and also one more thing is, you know, we tend to do this when we have a picture that is, you know, you're working in the middle of this uh, painting. You've got all this stuff going on here. But what I want to say is we want to feel like there's a world outside of this as well. So I want like, what else, what's coming in some over here? You know, like, I want to feel like there's more out here, you know, so... Mm -hmm. Like that, that's so like, it's a bigger world. We're just seeing a little piece of this world. We don't want to be like, okay, th these are the edges. We want to be you to be thinking bigger. And so this is just like a little sampling of this really cool world that you've, that you've discovered. See how gotcha. we're more staying in the middle here? Cause you're focused yep. on the middle. We want the focus to be bigger, more expansive. And then it's like, whoa, draw me into this world. And those little, um, lighter blues in the bottom uh, right corner. It's kind uh -huh. of like looking down on petals. If you are in the tree, you yeah. know, I think if I push those into just a little bit lighter, that would achieve what you're talking about, bringing your eye down into that right corner. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you know, talking about abstraction, you know, like you've got this dark down here, this big dark area, but be thoughtful about where you put darks. Like, I know this is a realistic thing, but just check this out. Like if I, if I put a little tiny dark, you know, where, where maybe a little dark, you know, could be in the picture, even smaller than that, um, it will, it'll activate it because you see that little tiny mark, look what that does. It's variety. It's like, oh, it's so this little tiny thing. All those dark shapes you're showing us, we want to see differences. And we, you also have to make this thing look real, but there's lots of places in this plant world where little specks of dark poke through. There's little lights coming on. There's subtlety. I mean, I really love these little tiny dots of color and the texture that you've got going. 
Um, but that's what we need. I want to see a little bit more tiny, scratchy, smaller marks. Everything feels kind of like palm sized a little bit still, you know, okay. but super duper, man. Really, really, uh, really fantastic work. Thank you. It's really fun to see like, you know, everything that you've been talking about kind of come into play. And it's so much about the contrast that we're experiencing and just really, you know, when, when we first saw this image as she, as she, you know, as it currently was, you see like all those, those blues in there and, and, and they're beautiful, but what you've done with really playing with the saturation, it actually highlights the blues even more. Yeah. Um, and I think one thing that we tend to do as artists, at least I do it is, you know, like sometimes I'll be mixing a color and be like, oh yeah, that really works. That like, oh, that's it. That's the color that I need. And I put it down and I'm like, yeah, that's perfect. And then I'm like, oh, it's so good. Let me put it all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which, so I lose you know, sometimes you fall in love with a color, but, but then you got to arrange it to highlight what it is you, what it is you love. And I'm arbitrarily like graying things down here. You know, she would do, you know, she would do it what she wants, but yeah, it's like, uh, it's easy to get a lot of things going, but you need, you need the contrast. You need to show what it is you're loving by minimizing and making the differences up to, mm -hmm. so you can see better what those are. It's, it's kind of, and you know, as I work on this thing, I, there's just more and more, you kind of, kind of keep going, you kind of find your way with it as you go, you know, but. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think like for, for me, the way I like to think about it is, um, is like music. Um, the reason, for example, if you think of Beethoven's fifth, the reason it's so powerful is because when he comes in, when Beethoven comes in with those like really like bomb, 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 yeah. it's followed by silence. So you have something to contrast it with. And in all music, if you had no contrast within the music, you wouldn't know what's loud and what's soft. If all of it is soft, it would right. be really boring. Yeah, no, it's and absolutely. If it's like, if all of it's really like loud screaming headbanger music, like even head, like the loudest screaming headbanging music, there's moments of silence in there so that you know like what you're listening to. And artistically, we can do the same thing, whether it is um, a cityscape, a cluster of flowers, an abstraction, yeah. like all of that makes this super, like this image is, is, was super powerful, but now we can really like experience different moments and get lost in it. Yeah, absolutely. And you get better at this. You, you know, it takes time, you know, like to start thinking about what it is you're making and how to get your head around it. And what is it that I want to say, you know, but it's always easy when you ask someone, it's like, what do you like? What part of this do you like? That's the clue for everyone on this call. You know, like what part of that ugly pain do you like? There's something there that's coming out and you just have to get a hold of it and then, and then minimize other things and build that other part out so you can start feeling it even more. Yeah. And that's how we get to see who you are. Like, that's how we get to know who Susan is. That's how we get to know who Paul is, you know, like, yeah. I've never been to, you know, like I've never been, to, I've never seen these flowers, but Susan can show them to me. Like I've seen flowers like this, but I've never seen them through Susan's eyes. And she gets to like, she has this opportunity to show us what it is that she's seeing and what she's, you know, what's kind of lighting her heart on fire. And, you know, hopefully I'll be able to go to Singapore someday, someday, but I haven't. So until then I get to experience it through Paul's eyes, you know, there's yeah. things like that. It's just like, it's such a gift for everybody that you create the art for. Yeah. It's so interesting. It's so interesting for me because like Paul's eye and what he's pulling out, like, I don't, I, it's so different than what I notice and see. And, you know, but I get a window into this world. I mean, we forget how, what we're making is, it's really important. It's really, it's a really, a, it's a contribution, you know? <laughs> It's about contributing something that other people can experience that they would never get to experience, you know? Yeah. And even, you know, like, like, you know, seeing, um, you know, if you go out plain air painting with people or you're in a studio and you're, um, you have a group of, you're in a workshop and you have a group of people and you're all painting from the same figure, it is incredible yeah. how 
differently people paint. And it's so one, it's so exciting and so wonderful because you're like, whoa, like that's really cool. The way that's a different, you know, and it all comes down to the differences that we see and what we choose to accentuate, what we, what we choose to minimize and the contrast that we create on, um, on the pan, on the, on our canvas. Yeah. Um, we've yeah. got one, we're, we're, we were like, I've been so into this. I lost track of time. We're already like an hour and poor Nick is probably. Oh my like, God. Wow. <laughs> Need some coffee or a beer or something. I'm not sure oh, I'm which. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> But, um, but I wanted to like, you know, to kind of bring this together because we've been talking so much about, um, um, about the free, the free workshop and stuff. And so, and you also have the creative visionary uh, program. So for people who want to really like dive into some of the things that you've been talking about all week and to go further on into some of these concepts with, with their work, can you like, I've, I have to admit, I've heard of Creative Visionary for a long, long time. I know you've been doing this for a long time. And I have talked to enough students who've been through it who are just like, oh my God, it's the most amazing thing. So I'm kind of excited to be able to introduce you to my audience. And I'm also excited because Nick doesn't know this yet, but I'm going to take Creative Visionary because I just want to, like, I've been hearing about it for so Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. Like, all right. Okay. So, now this is exciting. Oh Oh my God. I get to ask you all the questions. What yes. tell yes. me the thing? What is it? What do we get to learn? Like, like okay. Like well, um, so the Creative Visionary program is about a little bit kind of like what we were just doing on this call, getting you clear and excited and discovering, discovering your own art for yourself, what that feels like and getting a hold of that and then learning how to make that super strong getting to getting shifting your work from where it is now to taking it to a place where it's more powerful and more and easier to make and more fun and it, it resonates with people and it connects um, and that's a different journey for everyone i mean just on this call today you saw just these three different kinds of artwork but it, the it's all the same you know the principles it's like i'm just saying the same thing, basically, you know? So getting that information, super important. It's art making information, but there's a huge piece of this, which is like the mindset. And, and yeah. we go spend a long time helping, helping the artists spend some time figuring out what it is that lights them up. This, this idea of differences, what brings you alive in your life and floating that back into your artwork. So you're sort of reverse engineering your artwork. I teach creating kind of a, a, a potent potency and a feeling of aliveness first, understanding that. And then out of that comes your creativity, out of that comes this artwork. And, and when you approach your artwork from this mindset and, and feeling in a certain way, the art gets stronger. But then you also have the tools to physically make it. I mean, the things we were talking about today, you know, well, value contrast and, and that kind of stuff. So that's part of it is as in, in addition, going into process, how you make work, how you can make it more consistently, how you can avoid procrastination, some of the challenges and the resistance we feel, how to change that and get rid of that because you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally, totally. And it's kind of like, I mean, the, what, what, interests me the most about it is that um, the reason I've been like really looking forward to it is because I'm not, I, I'm an, I'm a representational slash observational painter, right? So I, that's how, yeah. that's how I work, but I, I'm so in love with abstract art and I'm so in love with bringing that into my work. And so I think it's like, you know, I read that, you know, <laughs> seriously, thousands of books. <laughs> But I'm like, I read so much and I can read like 20 books on the same subject and still keep learning more and more about it. Um, and that is, that's why like, I love taking um, like so many, like I love taking, like learning from everybody I can because you're gonna show me something in a way that I'm like, oh my God, that was right in front of my face. I didn't see it. This is so awesome. Yeah. Now I can't unsee it. And yeah. this is super fun. Um, I see Jason is asking in, in the chat, like, if you go through a down period with your work, is that okay and normal? Uh, yes. 
<laughs> and does the artist just keep working to go to get through those ruts? How do you deal with, um, how, do you, how do you deal with, I guess, if you just don't feel like making art? Um, I'll give you my answer really quick, which is, is it's a one word answer. And then I would love to hear Mick, um, Nick talk about it too. But my one word answer for that, Jason, is just fine as curiosity. There's one word, but um, I'll elaborate slightly and give you a sentence and just find something, anything that you're curious about um, and that gets you even the slightest bit excited. So whether it's what you saw here today of like, oh my gosh, like, I wonder what will happen if I just play with value for a little while, for 20 minutes while I go in and see how I feel then or saturation. That was more than one word, Nick. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> So here's the thing, um, we have resistance when when it doesn't when we're not into it when it doesn't feel like you're not getting what you need from the art. It's like I don't really want to go. You know how it's like that happens with people sometimes. It's like every time I hang out with this person, it's just like it's not that fun, even though I'm supposed to, and it's a it's an old friend, you know. And it's like at a certain point, you're like. I don't want to, you know, so here's the thing, Jason, what, what you've got to do is start really, um, you know, what is it that would light you up, right? Like what, like what would the art be that you make or what would you make or what would you do? Doing activities that light you up creates joy. And, and I, you know, and I don't know for everyone, it's for different for me. It's like, if I, if I, I'm like, I'm just, I can't even paint. I'm, I'm going to go run. I'm going to go do this or that. What are the things that light you up? And if you have, you're not sure, this is a super important question because this is the key. When you do things that light you up, you get happier, you get more joyful and out of being joyful is inspiration. You get inspired. You you feel more optimal. You just feel like think about when you're on vacation and you, you know, like you're doing whatever. You're in Hawaii and you're going scuba diving. You're seeing all these different things, and it's it's like you just feel fucking great. <laughs> you know, it's like well, of course you're on a vacation, but it's because you're doing things that light you up. It's like I love fish, and it's just like whoa, these colors and. I could do this all day. Now I'm going to go out to dinner, this neat place and the warm air and the water so beautiful and all these things that light you up. And guess what? That inspiration feeling, creativity, and most artists don't even understand this. Creativity is a reaction to feeling inspired. It comes out of it. It's what we do as human beings. You start making stuff. You want to make stuff because you have overflow and you start talking to more people, you start becoming almost like the best version of yourself. You've got juice. And that's, then you start making things and you want to do things that connect you back to what lights you up. So, and thinking about making art, thinking about sometimes just thinking about it all the time, that's not at all making art. So the only way to sort of get the juice going is to be dabbling in it, is to play, is to be putting the paint down, following that curiosity, because maybe some things could happen today just by like mixing paint and looking at it and seeing what happens. You just follow what feels live for you, but don't be trying to make your art today. Don't make anything anymore that doesn't feel kind of juicy. It's gotta be spicy and th there's no point, right? Mm -hmm live yeah. man go for it we, we this is the how you're going to make this cool work you've got to feel the juice so yeah. that's what i would recommend how to how to start this this is how what we do in the creative visionary program this is exactly what we do it's pretty cool yeah so um for those for everybody who's who's on now if anybody um signs up for it um like i'll kick into so i'm gonna do this too and then also um, I'm, if you guys sign up, just let me know that you signed up. And I saw Laureen, I can't say it. It's too late. It's for, it's like 10 o'clock. Laureen, <laughs> sorry. I'm the master at butchering people's names, which is funny <laughs> given that I have an unusual name. Um, but, um, so that includes like, if you've already signed up for it, then, um, like to kind of double down on that that topic there. Um, I have Mindset Mastery, which is a program that, um, that I've been doing for like a really long time, which we deal with this stuff in time management. I think it dovetails perfectly with what Nicholas is teaching. Wow. 
Um, so, uh, you, so you guys will, will get that. Um, and that's like a bonus that. people are going to get. Yes. As a bonus. Oh my God. That's so cool. For, for oh, I want to, I want to see this. Okay. That is great. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, and then also, um, we'll do a couple of office hours like together as, um, like I'll, I'll give you guys like four invitations to, to my office hours so we can continue to have this conversation and share what we're all learning, um, in, in Nicholas's course live. So there'll be, well, you know, reach out to me, uh, and I'd be happy to come in, uh, for you, especially if you're in the course and, and do a, do a thing with you guys. Um, so for all of you that are going to be moving through this program with Antrice, um, let's stay connected and, and I'd love to be invited if you want and, and just, you know, maybe in the middle of the thing and answer questions and, cause it's really cool to just like have a little mini group doing this. So that's God, fantastic. Yeah, I just think it'd be so much fun. Um, I can't remember who first told me about this program, but I've been hearing about it. And wow, kind of I'm just flattered that you you were coming. I'm really excited. It's going to be so fun. I know. I'm totally, totally, totally excited. Like with Lori, I'm so excited. It's like my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So um, any, oh, Bitsy, we have one more. Can you do one more real quick? Is sure, that okay? Yeah, I, sure. know we're, I know you've got to be super tired. Am I asking too much? No, no, I'm totally into it. And it's okay. just really fun. So Bitsy Broughton, um, she was the other name that I pulled out of the hat. I know she has two pieces, but I think, because I kind of checked them out while we were just talking, um, there's a red one and I would love to. Um, oh, okay. For you to talk about that one um, because Bitsy, um, as she explained it to me um, in her email, those two, one of them, the the other, the other one, she submitted both to a competition, and this red one did not get in, but the other one did, and so I think it'd be really interesting to do. Oh to yeah, well let me let me look at let me I'll open up the other one too. Hold on a second. And uh, Bitsy, oh, the blue know. one got in there. I mean, it means nothing, of course. We know, no. this, right? you know. But, but it is interesting. Bitsy, you are unmuted, I think. So you can um, tell us a little bit more about this. And yeah, like there's, there's um, so, I think um, one of the biggest things that um, I see the misunderstand, I, I would call it a misunderstanding. What people think when they don't get into a competition is the the meaning they give it is that the art wasn't good enough. And um, I have talked to so many art, so many jurors who do this, and they're like, it's so hard to be a juror because there's so many pieces that they want to let in, and they have a certain limitation, and they can't let them all in. And so, and I have talked to people who have juried. Um, competitions who are like oh my god it was the most heart like because they know because usually they're artists they know what it feels like and like the anxiety that they feel about saying no to people is real and what we imagine as the artists who are submitting is that they looked at it and went oh god <laughs> um, which is totally not the case <laughs> yeah yeah um Bitsy, are you, um, I just want to, I unmuted you. I just want to see, are you able to talk, Bitsy? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. And Antrice and Nicholas, I both want to, I want to say thank you to both of you. Antrice, you have been like a dear friend and a lifeline through this year and a joy to watch as you've developed Savvy Painter. And I thank you so much for including me in that. And Nicholas, I did your workshop this week and I just signed up for CVP as well. So it's oh, like Christmas. You guys just oh keep making God. it better and better and better. Oh, I'm so and excited. It's really, really great to get to, to meet you guys who I've never met. You know, I mean, obviously it's coming through Antrice, but, you know, we're going to be connected now uh, probably for a long time. All we of us. Are. I'm, just, I'm excited. And I'm, I'm a little bit... Um, I feel connected to you because I moved up to Oregon about seven years ago, but I used to live in Stinson Beach for years and years. And so I know where you are in Sausalito and it just makes me feel like I'm home again when I even see you. So thank you for oh, that as well. Yeah. <laughs> I love Stinson Beach. I love, I, I love it out there. Okay. okay. So this piece what was not selected. And um, after listening to everyone talk, what's so clear for me as well, I tend to do more, rep well, I do more representational work and have just started into abstraction and but I drug my same old baggage over with me to abstraction in that not only do I struggle with composition 
if I have one specific object like a portrait to do, I can nail that. But whatever is around it going on is, is difficult for me. And I, no matter what I paint, I tend to make it all the same value until it's all just kind of mid-tone. Yeah. And so, um, and once I started doing some abstract, I noticed I was doing the same thing. So that's, I think, Nicholas, if you could address anything either around composition or around value, that would be very helpful yeah. for me. Thank you. Great. Yeah, and you're so right. We carry this sort of like, that you're noticing like, God, oh, the same thing's happening. You know, it's because you're not just, you know, that same challenge you had will be in anything, you know? So it's right. good to, that principle, you know, it shows up when we're understanding it and it also shows up when we're not understanding it, but good for you for realizing it. And you were watching that free workshop and started to make some connections. So that's really good. So which of these two paintings do you like better? I'm just curious, this one or this one? It varies. I like the energy of the red one. Uh -huh. But I really love the feel and the color of the blue one. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, let's, let's, because we've got two, let's just compare and contrast a little here. Okay. Now, in the free workshop, I talked about kind of moving your eye around and uh -huh. going to different places. And this picture, um, you know, there's a lot of, both of these have a lot of great stuff going for it. It's completely arbitrary, kind of what people choose sometimes. But I understand, I, I think I know why this piece was chosen, why this one feels a little stronger to me, even though the other one has got a much stronger color thing going, it's really powerful. But here's the thing, when we look at this picture, our eye goes, now I'm talking about value contrast. Again, this is the number one thing that is, you know, and design, moving our eye around. Our eye goes to where the biggest contrast is. And, we, and we, when we feel, when we're taken to different places in a picture, we feel more satisfied. So our eye goes here, our eye goes here. These are the contrasts, our eye goes here. We even go down here. We even go here, we go over here. So do you realize that I'm being taken around this picture in a really beautiful way? This is where you, so everything is like, you know, yes, maybe this is the focal point kind of, but we're going to other places. This is one of the primary things that makes a powerful painting because you're using the whole board. And then you've got these proportions of these bands of color, like this orange is kind of big-ish and this is, you know, kind of medium sized band and this is a little bigger and you have this little smaller piece down here. You have something else that we didn't even have time to talk about this week. You have texture in this and that's sort of beautiful. Like there's texture here and then you have smooth areas, right? Now, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and there's this color thing going on and stuff. So, and <laughs> you've got this like vertical, there's some differences in these leaves that are covered. So there's a lot of things in this. Now, if we look here, when we talk about where our eye goes, our eye goes to where the biggest contrast is and our eye goes for sure right here. Uh -huh. the, biggest, the biggest thing in your picture also just happens to be the biggest contrast. So it's like a bully on a playground. We are gonna stay right here and we're gonna look at that and we look at that and it's pretty cool, but we're not going some, we're not gonna, I mean, we might go up here a little bit but this is nothing up here is as strong as this compared to this picture where it's like, do you see how we're gently being led around? There's some more, it's like we get to cruise around in this landscape. Here, you know, you've chained us to this part of the picture. Watch what happens when I bring some value contrast up just arbitrarily to another section of this, of this picture. Like, hey, look up here. Don't come up here as well. Let's see if I can just fake it a little bit. Um, do you see how, oh my God, now, now I'm going up there too. Does uh -huh. that make sense? Do you see how that kind of starts activating it a little bit? You know, we can yes. kind of have, and this is important. This is like, this is exactly what was happening in that kind of workshop, like a little bit some differences in some different places, um, you know, and we can have, you know, so I love this picture because you've got, 
you've got all this radical brushstroke things, you know, a lot of like grayed out kind of like they're dark, but they're not too dark. You talked about that value. You've got this strong dark here, but we can, we can remedy that middle value. Like we can have it get, you can have some area that can get a little darker. Watch how this, as the values uh, ranges in this, bring up a little dark here. Do you get it? So uh -huh. we're starting to, um, you know, get a little bit of, um, I'm looking for a little way to bring some contrast in here. Um, we're moving around this picture um, and everything's so textural here. Do you see this texture? It's so textural. And then this is so not textural, but right. it'd be nice to have a little bit of texture in this. So they relate a little bit more. I love the smoothness, but let me see if I can kind of fake it here. You know, what's interesting is in that red that is smooth looking because I didn't photograph it very well. There's actually a lot of texture, but it's in the same color. And so it just ah. doesn't, it doesn't read. It just doesn't, if you had it in real life, you could see it with, you know, the light in a certain way, but it just doesn't read strongly enough. So I right. agree. So check it out. I'm, put, I'm, making, make it. I'm making it show up a little bit. Do you see how, do you see how it's like, oh, okay, it's part of that same world up there, you know, just a little bit. Okay. Right? And uh -huh. then see this big white massive shape here, this big, huge white thing. It's so foreign. I can uh -huh. take, I can take maybe, uh, let's see, I want to bring a little bit of this red color, just a little bit um, and just, just knock this back. I want to make just, I'm still going to be like a white puffy snowball but look at how, as I quiet this down, see how it's going back a little bit? Just slowly it's uh -huh. going back and we're starting to like, oh my God, the bully has been, you know, the principal came out and, and told him to be quiet <laughs> and now he's not as powerful. And now we get to move around. We get to see uh -huh. more stuff. It's so exciting now. We get to see all this cool stuff that you gave us here that we weren't looking at before. Um, this is, and look, bringing that up a little bit, coming around, we can get them, let's go over here a little bit. Let's go right, see if I can get this here. Um, okay, let's see. You know, look, we have a little bit of, let's get your the viewer to look over here a little bit, bring a little bit of light there, just to activate it. Do you get it? So look, check it yeah. out. We're staying in one place. One place, it's this big snowball guy that's just, he's just bossing us around. Now we get to go other places. We've actually turned this painting, and this is a better painting, by the way. Um, now it's stronger. Yeah. But this is, this could get better too, but this is doing it better. This is more, these paintings are kind of doing the same thing now, but this is a more bolder, cooler thing. I think this would have won had it had some of it had that ability to take us around. Okay. Now I want, to, I want to show you one more thing, a difference here, which is more saturated, the blue or the orange? Mm, I would, I would say the blue. It's yeah, it's close though. Right. And that yeah, is problem. close. And we I remember actually putting what it on. you love. Is it the blue or is it the orange? So check this out. I'm going to select, um, I'm going to select the orange and I'm going to make it less orange, believe it or not, because I'm going to double down. And this is just a theory I have. We'll see if it works. Um, I'm going to watch what happens to the blues in this picture as orange stops competing. Look at that. It's not beautiful. Like it, it starts to get like, now this blue that we've got going over here, all this blue, we can really start picking up on that blue. Um, and we can use the blue, by the way, to move our eye around. And instead of just having all the blue in one spot, um, we can bring it a little bit more down here, like bring, bring it, you know, like bring this up. So we got a little bit maybe a little bit more here, you know, make it so it's, we can see it um, a little bit more. Just increase that a little bit. 
Let's get it this all this blue here. Now, overall, um, I'm going to also uh, just bring up the light a little bit, increase those darks a little bit, you know, so we can just sort of feel this more. You get it? I think we can even take this orange down a little bit more. It's okay to have a, like a little bit of gray coming in there. Do you get it? And these uh -huh. little tips of white, you know, like having, take some of that, like that light area and bring it into a few, we're gonna notice this, it's so nice to have white. Like you have no white down here. That's the opposite of all this color. Like bring some of that in, um, you know, so we moves our eye around and we start to get a richer, a richer thing, little chunks of dark. Watch how this activates it. You know, we're just, we're just taking little tiny areas and there's some dark right here. God, let's see this. Even though we don't have huge darks in this, we still need them, you know? And this leaf, like, look at this leaf here. See this, you know, this is a small leaf and this is like a kind of a little bigger leaf. What if this leaf, what if we went and made this leaf bigger here? Uh -huh. you know, like, that's a design thing. Like, like, let's go for it. Let's just show this. Like, let's bring this. Maybe some of it's even going off. You get it? Now we're starting to feel the cool things in this work. Uh -huh. That's funny. I originally had a really big leaf over there and I took it out because I thought it was too strong. But with what you're doing, I see the improvement. You get a lot more depth in the piece. It doesn't look so flat. Yeah. And sometimes when we do something, it does feel too strong, but it's because everything else is too weak. And this is uh -huh. a challenge. This is what takes some experience. It's like, no, 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 don't make it weaker. Don't adjust to the, you know, the weakest rower in the boat. You know, uh -huh. get everyone to get a little stronger and then things will, you know, you can have subtlety and then you can have boldness. Having more boldness allows you to then have even more subtlety. Thank you. Sure, sure. Thank really you very much. Really strong work. Love it. Well, Nicholas, thank you so much. This has just been so much fun to watch. I love, love, love watching critiques <clears throat> and watching... Um, seeing everybody's work and, and seeing um, different perspectives and different takes on it. It's, it's really. Yeah. Yeah, it's no, really it's, fun. it's, it's cool. And it's, what I love is it's like, this isn't how she would fix it, but she can use the principles and make it what she wants. Like this is, you know, I, this is demonstrating the principles and, and, you know, but when I, but when I look at this, it's like, oh, this could go so many directions. There's so many great things about it. It's just, there's a bunch of things that could be made greater by just eliminating some of the things that are competing. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like, that's part of the simplification process. And as you've been talking about sort of the discernment process as well. Um, yeah. Those decisions and the decisions that you make you know, don't be afraid of making those, those, those hard decisions because those decisions are exactly what made, that's your thumbprint. That's what makes your art yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you speak of this so well and yeah, that's absolutely correct. Absolutely, yeah. I just want more art in this world. That's all I want. <laughs> yeah. We're doing it one artist at a time. No, Absolutely. it's true. Yeah, it's, yeah, totally. <laughs> it's true. And um, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let everybody go now, but I just wanted to say again, thank you so much, Nicholas. And um, you know, again, one more time to to just like this concept of the mindset that comes up. Like we we throw these blocks in, in our own ways and and um, the the thing is is that we all do it. Um, and so in that one regard, you are not a special snowflake. You're not alone because every artist I have ever talked to 
has those same issues. So um, I do want more art in this world and I do want to see your art, but, but as important, more important than that is this idea that um, there's nothing wrong with you yeah. <laughs> because art is hard. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, I'm really excited about uh, this little entries uh, CVP group again, uh, let's, let's talk offline, you know, reach out to me and let's set a time up. And um, I think it's going to be really cool. We, we see a tremendous amount of progress with, with people who are in like little clusters, because sometimes a friend will bring in four or five people, but you know, you, how you, what you're going to share and learn by doing this, you can translate it so well. So it's such a benefit for people to be in contact with you doing this, learning this and seeing it in your work and you can translate it. And if I can help in any way, uh, you guys, I, I'm, I'm really would love to do that. I'm, I'm really excited. I'm really honored you're going to uh, participate. Yeah, me too. And you know, I'm going to take you up on that, but um... <laughs> yeah, no, totally. <laughs> Be careful. Like, see, this is the thing with me. If you say something like that, or if you ever say like, hey, if you are ever traveling and you want to visit this place, come see me. I'm going to show up at your house. I'm the same way. I'll show. I, we can't right now, but I do. I traveled all okay. over the place. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. I mean, you've absolutely. Gone yeah. I think that this is going to be an hour. I cannot believe you're still like talking coherently given how oh, much. Oh, I love, I just love this stuff, you know, but yeah, it's going to be great to just get, you know, I have to talk a lot about the program right now because it's only open for these five days and stuff, you know, but then, then we're all together and it just gets really focused and we're just doing art and I, I love it, you know, so yeah. it's going to be great. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks everybody.